In the front gallery at the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft, Adrian Esparza has literally deconstructed a Mexican-American tradition. I've been surprised how people have received uh, this body of work where I take a sarape and utilize it to create uh, an abstract form. But I think it's kind of uh, appealing and people are familiar with the image of the sarape. Not only the image, but also the symbol. So the ability to see an object, have it relate to a country or a region, and then all of a sudden see it transformed and become a part of uh, the art world is kind of an interesting aspect that uh, people find familiar, but at the same time, kind of inventive. The found object has always been pretty important to me. The idea of taking an object from our everyday life, uh, evaluating it, transforming it, maybe even destroying it to some degree. Just like uh, anything else, just like when you read, you go back, you review, you think about what you've read. I do the same thing with objects. Where did they come from? How were they used? How are they seen culturally? And once that uh, process is done, I go to work and the creative act begins. Spectra is an installation style exhibition built for the space. Curatorial fellow Catherine Hall gives some advice on approaching the form. I think the first way to approach it is to really kind of think of it as an installation, as a unit, as a whole. Um, he's kind of creating this, you know, visual landscape yet again and really kind of thinking about optical kinetics, which is kind of the illusions that color and line can play in creating movement. So I encourage the viewer to walk around the space, kind of see how that color changes the perspective, um, and also think about how he's looking at the physical construction of the space and working with it to kind of make the lines almost look somewhat four-dimensional as you're walking through. In the main gallery, Christine Nochisi McCorse displays works rooted in a native landscape. I live right smack in the middle of Santa Fe and uh, up and down the Rio Grande. There are so many different types of native arts and crafts that uh, you can't help but be influenced by the different styles that, I mean, they're just maybe 30 miles apart, but they're just so different. And so you get a wide variety of uh, tribal art. I think at the beginning, it, it's uh, dabbling in the traditional arts. And then as you go along, I mean, you have so many influences around you that you cannot shut out and shouldn't. And um, so if you are a creative person, then, then you do utilize those new concepts and those new forms and, and um, new techniques, uh, they all come into play. And, um, and then at that point, I think you're, you start developing your own style. Curator Elizabeth Kozowski encourages visitors to consider the process of craft. I think this is a really great exhibit because Christine has also provided um, the sketches for this body of work, so you get a real sense of the history and approach to um, her process from the 1990s to, through the current work which was created this past year. So it's real fun to sort of take a look and walk through, look at the sketches, maybe try and find the pieces, see how they've evolved from the ideas that she put down on paper and then when she started working in the actual clay. So I think that's um, a lot of fun as part of this exhibition is that you have the actual work and you have the sketches from where she drew her inspirations from. For more information about these exhibits and special events, visit the Center's website at www.crafthouston.org. For Artbeat, I'm Stacy Hawkins.